Welcome to the Hey Legal Quiz with me, Edith Forrest. The aim of this quiz is to provide some light-hearted entertainment during lockdown and beyond. I'll be asking 20 questions of leading Scottish legal figures, questions which give insight to their careers and their lives beyond the law. So let's begin. So I'm joined today by Lady Ray, who's kindly agreed to take the Hey Legal Quiz. Thank you so much, Lady Ray, for, for joining us. I'm not sure I'm going to say my pleasure, but that, that will have to be judged by others. <laughs> okay, um, so we will just get started. Uh, we have 22 questions and uh, we'll start off with the first one, which is if you weren't a lawyer, what, what would you be? What would you have been? Uh, th- that's quite a difficult one in a sense because I, I, I think initially I had thought about doing either law or medicine, although inherently uh, deep down, the only thing I really wanted to do was law. Uh, at one point, I thought about joining the civil service, but joining the civil service when I was young wouldn't, you know, I didn't have the right background, um, mm-hmm. being half Italian, because it would have been the foreign office I would have wanted to join. So I would have quite mm-hmm. liked, but of course, I would have wanted to be a diplomat. So I don't think there was any prospects of um, it, of, of that happening, but I think it was essentially the law that was really the only thing I really was passionate about. Okay, and was that from a young age then? At, during school, were you kind of thinking about that then? Yes, I, I mean, I, I grew up with, I don't know if you've heard this story, and if you haven't, just tell me you're a bit bored with it, because I grew up with hearing stories about my Italian grandfather, who was a lawyer in Naples during the fascist era. And, um, and, and this might, might tie into a later question, but, you know, uh, hearing stories about him, how he um, resisted fascism to the extent that my mother, he, w- he wouldn't join the fascist party. Now, we're talking about in the late 20s and early 30s. Mm-hmm. Um, and my mother couldn't go to school because he wouldn't, join the fascist party and she had to be educated privately at home. Right. So you can imagine the standard of education she had. And he died in 1937. Mm-hmm. He was such a prominent lawyer in Naples. They didn't, they didn't touch him. But I, I don't think he would have survived. Had he survived into the war, he would most certainly have been arrested. But it was hearing stories about his honesty, his integrity, his love of the law mm-hmm. from, from both my mother and my grandmother. That you know, when when you get that as a tiny child or as a young child, it sticks with you. Yeah, absolutely. That that was the, the inspiration, or or part of the inspiration for you to follow in the law. No, that was the principal inspiration. Wow. That was that was the inspiration to go into the law. Goodness, how interesting. Okay, um, and just you touched on, on meds, possibly medicine. Was that anything that you looked seriously at or was it just a, a passing no, notion? Not, not really. I mean, I was fascinated by uh, medicine mm-hmm. in, in a sense because it was, you know, a profession. Um, and yes, I did think about it, but of course I, I you know, still have a, a, an interest. It was quite interesting doing the sort of cases that, I did at the bar and also on the bench, you know, getting the professional witnesses in, yeah. particularly if there was a, a, an issue about cause of death uh, and cross-examining. Mm-hmm. That was the thing I used to love was cross-examining expert witnesses because right. you, had to, you had to do quite a lot of work on that. You'll know that yourself. Mm-hmm. You've got to do a lot of work on that. And I'm not suggesting you build up an expertise, but you need to know what you're talking about. And you need to know it in a fashion learn about it in such a way that you are able to ask the questions that the jury will understand, so putting it into a language that the jury will understand so they can understand the point you're making. Absolutely. And uh, I used to love doing that. Yeah, I miss that terribly. But Uh, I think you're right, and there's that. It's finding that balance between understanding it so that you can speak to an expert about it and to be understanding at that level, but equally to be deep to be delivering the, the evidence at a level that the layperson can understand as well. Absolutely. And that's the, that's the task of the council, mm. uh, is in asking the West questions in such a way. Even if the council think, oh, I, I shouldn't ask that question, I might appear stupid. Yeah. No, I, I think even if the, the council says, well, it's perhaps my fault, I don't understand, but could you perhaps explain that in, in more layman's language? And I think the jury always appreciate that. 
Yeah. You know, don't, I, I would have said, don't ever be scared to, even if you, you, you know what he meant, but to pretend you didn't, not pretend, but to, to ask the, the witness to explain it in a more common language for the benefit of the jury who probably don't know anything about the expertise. Yeah. So yeah. that was fun. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Question number two is, did you have a nickname at school? And if so, what was it and why were you given it? I, I, didn't, I don't think I had a nickname at school. Not, not that I recollect as such, but um, there were, were occasions when, um, and you, you, you might understand this a bit, there were occasions when some teachers used to refer to me as a barrack room lawyer. <laughs> as did my father sometimes. Um, you've got to remember that this was the years of uh, there was national service because I had did have a habit of arguing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I thought something wasn't right or if I thought something wasn't fair, I wouldn't uh, keep quiet. And my mother used to call me last word. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, just, yeah, but I, I, yeah, it was just the way it is. Yeah, absolutely. But you felt, um, a, you know, a sense of justice, even. Oh, I, back no, then. I, yeah, that, this is not fair. Yeah. You know, you, you will know your own, your parents are saying, you're not doing that. Why? Because I say so. <laughs> well, that used to really, <laughs> it's not fair. So it, my mother actually was really good because having been the daughter of a lawyer, the problem was that she would always have a very cogent argument mm -hmm. for you not doing something. And that's very frustrating for a child. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it's not fair if you can actually understand the reason, you know, especially if you are, are in keeping with wanting a reasoned decision, mm -hmm. even in those early days. Yeah. And you get that from a parent. So you can't argue with them. So that, I felt, was also a degree of unfairness as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. So sticking with school, Lady Ray, uh, question number three is, were you a swatty type at school? Well, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't very bright. I, wasn't, I, d I didn't think I was very bright or very clever. But, yeah, I did work quite hard. Mm -hmm. um, I was also very, very shy um, as a child um, and right into university. Um, so... Um, so I probably did concentrate more on my studies than I did um, enjoying myself. Yeah. But that's, yep. Oh, okay. Um, question number four is, what was your first job? Well, actually, my first job was only when after I'd left university, and that was uh, uh, my apprenticeship in those days right. with um, a firm in Glasgow. Yeah, that was my first job. Absolutely petrified. Really? <laughs> Didn't even know how to write a letter. Uh -huh. You know, that, you know the, 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 and, and fortunately, the firm I was with was really very, very good about, um, you know, getting you to structure a letter properly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, but I was, I was really terrified. Right. So even at the start of your apprenticeship, were you still quite shy and quiet? Yeah. 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 I'd, I'd actually joined the firm. That they offered me, when I went for my interview, they offered to let me go into the firm during the summer holidays. Uh, and uh, I think that was between, was that between third and fourth year at university? I think it was. So I got an experience of, uh, being in an office mm -hmm. for the first time in my life uh, during the summer holidays and got the princely sum of £25 for the yeah. month, which I was so proud of. You know, I yeah. practically would have framed it. But it did give you that experience of the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, yes, I was shy then. Okay. Yeah. I chose the wrong career. Well, I was going to say, when did that, you obviously don't think people would call you shy now, but maybe this forms part of your later questions, but when did you start to kind of come into your own and get a bit of confidence? And um, Every time I went into court, mm -hmm. I was um, uh, lacking in confidence. Mm -hmm. But you, you develop a, a, a way of trying to hide it. Yeah. Um, and it means that whatever you do, you're really preparing everything. Mm. Um, even to some extent, I don't think you could ever over-prepare a case. No. But I used to be quite very, 
I, th I think all lawyers are quite nervous when they go into court. Mm -hmm. But it was the only thing I really wanted to do was yeah. actually go into the court. And the reason I didn't go to the bar earlier on is I was still very shy. Right. Um, uh, uh, because the, the faculty of advocates was really what I wanted even when I was at university. But I didn't have the courage to do that when I finished my apprenticeship. Right. Goodness. I, you know, you're not the only person that's done the quiz that has said that um, and people that perhaps we wouldn't expect to be saying, mm. well, I'm shy, mm. you know, I don't like doing certain things. Mm. But mm -hmm. I suppose it's, we all have that in us somewhere and it's just, um, as you say, we, you do develop ways to, to cover that mm. up and mm -hmm. your determination or desire to, to go to the bar clearly overruled that. So you managed to get over it and... Um, I think it was because I, you know, after um, I had been a, a, you know, I obviously was a very young solicitor. I became a partner at the age of 27 of that uh, um, large firm in Glasgow um, right. I, I, and did criminal work principally. And then when I decided to leave, that gave me the, the opportunity, in a sense, to go and do what I'd always wanted to do originally. Mm -hmm. And that was go to the bar and join the Faculty of Advocates. Right. Okay. All right. Um, question, question five. How do you define success? Certainly not by a bank balance. Um, and, and I've often said this, you know, when doing talks to um, students or at the university. I, I think it's being able to hold your head up and knowing that you've acted honestly and with integrity mm. throughout your um, legal career. And for me, that is a sign of success. Yeah. Um, al although I suppose getting the job that you never thought you would get in a million years <laughs> um, might be classed as a degree of success. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but principally I think it's acting with... You know, if you can look back and say you've always acted honest, honestly and with integrity, then that for me is much more important, yeah. certainly than the bank balance. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, question number six, uh, your favourite drink? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm afraid I can't give you any kind of exotic uh, drink or exotic spirit because I don't, don't really like spirits, but I suppose... You know, I, I quite like wine, and I suppose if if you're offering me my favourite drink, it must be a glass of champagne. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, good taste. <laughs> Question seven: um, What do I suppose? What what you obviously have have recently retired from the bench, Lady Ray. I should probably have pointed that out at the start. Um, <laughs> this is being recorded uh, the nineteenth, the ninth, the nineteenth of June. <laughs> So very yes. recently, um, so the question is, what don't you like about your job or what didn't you like about your job? Well, what I was going to say when the original question was, what don't you like about your job? Retirement. Yeah. Oh. Um, um, the trouble is that, and, and I'm not, I mean, I've said this before, I loved every minute of the profession. Mm -hmm. um, there were things you don't like. Yeah. Um, um, and I suppose, in a sense, the only thing about it is, was that the pressure mm. and the strain that you, that I think we all were under. Yeah. And that stress um, and pressure exists just as much, uh, 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 you know, when you're sitting on the bench mm -hmm. as you are when you're um, off the bench or, or rather in the well of the court. Mm. And I suppose that, I think it got worse. I mean, you'll have seen this, the pressure to get through trials. Yeah. Um, you know, um, you, you put one jury out and you're immediately uh, impaneling another jury. Well, the one jury's out. So that, that and, and you're having to switch from one thing mm. immediately to another. Part of the... Um, it's necessary, it's, but it, but I think it was probably the stress is the least thing I, I enjoyed. But um, as I said, I've got this sign in my kitchen which says, 
I think I may have said to you before, I've got this sign of, in my kitchen which says, without stress, my life would be empty. So uh, maybe that I, I've just argued against my first answer there. I know. But it's, I suppose it keeps us going, but there's a, it's, it's just finding the balance, isn't it? Um, with that, 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 that's the point. And it's about ha- trying to have other interests that, um, um, you know, alleviate that stress, that ability to alleviate stress, I think is absolutely essential. Mm. Sorry, and my hands go a bit because that's my half Italian, you know, the hands. <laughs> <laughs> not at all um, alright question number 8 uh, is what, which was your most memorable case to date how long have, how long have you got um, <laughs> I mean I, I I've dealt with quite a number of um, cases which I thought were quite memorable um, I suppose the earliest one which I did when I was at the bar was the ice cream war what was called the ice cream war trial Yeah, that was way back in 1984 I think okay. yeah and I was I'd, I'd only called in 1982 and I was instructed to lead in one for one of the accused right. who wasn't actually on the murder charge but was in the associated um, war if you can call it that yeah. I mean it was the press that called it the ice cream war trap and that was in those days you know if you were instructed in something as important as that, you went to speak to the Dean of Faculty to seek permission to, okay. to do that. And the response I got, well, you've been doing trials for quite a long time. So I did it, but it was very tense and it was really, um, you, you, the, the, you, you could feel the tension mm. in the court um, uh, because of um, six people who had died. So I suppose that probably was the most memorable case, certainly when I was at the bar, although I did do a few other, you know, you felt as if it was, you were like rumple of the Bailey when people were calling it the Bothwell sewage trial. <laughs> and you realised you had, you realised you had a quality practice, you know. Um, uh, once I was in Strasbourg at the Court of Human Rights and then the next minute you're doing the Bothwell sewage trial, so... <laughs> And did you find uh, those that you know you're talking about certainly with the ice cream wars? Um, were you, uh, f- you know, were there many women at the bar at that time, or were you uh, one of the few that were practicing that level? There the, the were, there were. I think was it thirteen when I was joined, but most, if not all, were doing principally civil work. Right. Um, o- o- although. Uh, the Lord Justice Clark was at the bar as well, and she was doing crime. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it must have been because of what I was doing in Glasgow that crime kind of followed me in a sense. But when I was a young solicitor, I was the only female doing full time crime. Okay. When I was, uh, 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 as far as I'm aware, anyway. Mm-hmm. And so that, that that kind of work followed you when yeah. you went to the bar. Fortunately, yeah. I mean, I wasn't inundated with instructions, but I was busy constantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, uh, but some solicitors um, would say, I remember one saying to me, I wouldn't instruct a female advocate unless it was a rape case. Mm -hmm. Now, I restrained myself from um, striking him (laughs) because I didn't think it would be appropriate. Um, But, you know, it was that I was fortunate in the sense that I love doing fraud and things like that. You know, give me piles of papers. Once I had a, was instructed in a long fraud and my brief arrived in a furniture van. Goodness. <laughs> wow. So, um, so I was lucky in the sense that I wasn't, I, I wasn't doing as many um, uh, rape trials or sexual mm-hmm. cases. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think it was fair that, you know, they thought that women should be doing yeah. these kind of cases. Unfortunately, when you see the women at the bar now, Mm. You're doing a mixture of work and mm. not solely no. sexual cases. Albeit the majority of cases in the High Court are sexual cases anyway, so inevitably everybody's doing them. So That's, that's, yeah. that's correct, and, and, mm. and um, that, that's perhaps a sad reflection of the way that things have moved. Mm. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I, was, I was out of it by that year. When I say I was out of it by that year, no, you know, I'm now on the bench. I was now then thereafter on the bench yeah. doing a lot of these cases as yeah. well so still involved yeah all right um 
Question number nine is, tell me one thing that would surprise me about you. It might, I don't know if this would surprise you. Certainly there are some who will listen to this who will not, it will not surprise me. I love fast cars. <laughs> okay. I used to drive um, to Italy every summer, uh, with my, usually with my mum. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, each year, because my mum being Italian, so I would take her to Italy. It was, you know, it was a great um, you, you, your onus that I had to take my mother to Italy. Mm -hmm. um, and she loved fast cars as well. So we used to do, you know, the Alpine passes over the top and all the hairpin bends, uh -huh. etc. Uh -huh. And I, I used to drive very, very I, I, I hasten to add, I used to drive <laughs> very, very fast. And, and I, I've still got a fast car. Right. And one of the best things I ever did was, when it was my 60th birthday, friends of mine got me a knock hill experience. Okay. And it meant driving my three litre car round knock hill 25 laps and I even, in, I think I surprised the instructor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. So I'd love to do it with this car, but um, I don't know okay. if I'll get the chance. Fantastic. What kind of car have you got at the moment then that you're hoping to? Um, it's, it's a C43 AMG Mercedes. Oh, right. Okay, powerful car. It is, yeah. and it, it growls. <laughs> you know, when you put it on Sports Plus mode, it growls. Oh, Gosh, I'm, I'm giving away a lot here today. <laughs> <laughs> I like fast cars as well. And I, oh, do you? Yeah, I, went, I um, went down to Silverstone I think once, um, or I think I did the Mercedes, um, they do a, a kind of experience day as well. And oh. yeah, you just, um, the instructors are so calm because they, they're just, they just say, right, just floor it, uh, get your foot to the floor yes. and off you go. And mm -hmm. you think, goodness, these people are really brave. But, and the, the more you're going round, as you'll know, the more you, you pick up a bit more confidence uh, and then you're driving about like a rally driver. Um, yeah. Good places to go and, and uh, Use up yeah, that. I, and it gives you such an exhilaration. I remember when I came off the track, um, I mean, we had to stop after 10 laps to let right. the brake, um, uh, you know, cool down. Cool because down. Uh -huh. I don't know if you've ever been in Knock Hill, but it's a lot of um, driving very fast towards a bend, braking hard, and right. then accelerating quite fast the way. So the car really the brakes get really really hot Goodness. so uh, i remember coming off the um the, w when i'd finished and i don't know what it's like to take drugs but i was in such a high <laughs> i couldn't even i couldn't even drink a cup of coffee <laughs> <laughs> and you you really need to calm down when you when you come off that because otherwise you know you get in your car and you drive out yeah. and, and you imagine yeah. you're still there. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I had somebody else in the car, so I calmed down. But it was yeah. absolute. It was exhilarating. Yeah, absolutely. My certificate hanging up there somewhere. So this is tough. Oh, you'll need to do that again with the new one. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd like yeah. to. Yeah, great. Um, okay, uh, question number eleven. No, oh, sorry, question ten. What traits in others irritate you the most? <laughs> well, perhaps it doesn't affect me so much, but uh, pleaders who are speaking too fast in court. <laughs> have you heard that before? Um, I think I've maybe heard that, yes, um, and that comment from the bench. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it changed days. I think when we had shorthand writers, it slowed the pace down. Mm. And when you see some of the older pleaders, I, I don't mean necessarily in age, but those that, you know, were pleading at the same time as me, they have a a much more um, kind of s slower pace, mm -hmm. but are not stopping and starting, if you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and so one's capable to, uh, one, one is able to note the evidence properly. So, you know, watching some people like Donald Finley, I mean, excellent. You know, you, you never had to, he, he, he almost doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. You've never got to ask him to slow down. Yeah. If, if, you, if you watch, if you get a chance to, to watch him, Mm -hmm. It's really, um, uh, you, you know, for a judge, it's it's just the right pace. You never have to stop them. Not that you probably could, but 
Um, <laughs> but but you would never have to in that sense. I don't mean that. I'm not meaning that disrespectfully. No, no. Um, because I've got a very high regard um, for him. Mm-hmm. But the other thing that really annoys me is, you know, that when people, I'm saying, you know, is using the phrase constantly, you know, or the word like. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that, especially with young people. It's every, <laughs> every third word is like, and that, that, that does irritate me terribly. <laughs> so, but I haven't said it to any of my godchildren, all of whom do it. <laughs> All right. Question number 11 is favourite flavour of crisps? I don't usually eat crisps, but I suppose for dietary reasons. But, you know, if I've got people coming, I, I must say I do like salt and vinegar crisps. But that's, yeah, but I don't buy them normally um, mm. at all unless uh-huh. I've got guests coming. That's my excuse for buying <laughs> yeah. salt and vinegar. <laughs> oh, they're my favourite as well and like you I don't buy them because I would just eat them all um, if they were you can't stop <laughs> especially the things of Pringles yeah you just can't <laughs> stop that's advertising sorry <laughs> <laughs> um, alright question number 12 is what book would you recommend everyone should read now everyone or everybody I, I thought I thought of this on the basis of budding lawyers um, mm-hmm. and I'm going to take a liberty Mm-hmm. Them would you suggest to suppose the one that I really enjoyed reading were the trials of Marshall Hall. All right, Edward Hall, who was um, a, he was termed as an advocate, but obviously a barrister, died in 1927. Mm-hmm. And they also did a television program about him, okay. a series that was called Shadow of a Noose, right? And obviously, there was hanging at that time. Mm-hmm. which I think we talk about life now being stressful, but that must have been extremely stressful. And there were the famous trials of Marshall Hall, and they're just fascinating to read. Mm-hmm. And recently, Sarah Smith has written a, um, an, a biography of him. And it's, I, think it, I think it's worth the read. You know, it, 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 I suppose it goes back to a completely different era, mm-hmm. but it's fascinating to read these stories. And he basically defended... Um, for the most part, defended uh, 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 in criminal trials, although he did some very prominent um, uh, civil cases, mm-hmm. libel and that sort of thing. So it was fascinating. But the one I would recommend every budding lawyer to read, and it's not just one, it's a series of them, is Rumpole of the Bailey. Okay. I don't know if you've ever read any of these books. I've not or, read any, but I can. I think there's really uh, things I've always meant to do, but you recommend them. Or, Leo McKern uh, was uh, excellent at, in the TV um, uh, series. And th- I suppose the reason I enjoyed them so much was because for me they were a caricature of mm. what actually happened in court. Sometimes, you know, the sotto voce comment uh-huh. from counsel that the judge probably can, can hear. Um, <laughs> I think, we, we, you know, some of the characters that are liable to do that so yeah. that the judge can actually hear what's being said. But they're, they're really good. And John Mortimer obviously was a barrister. Mm. And they're, they're fun, but they're also uh, um, they're good fun, but quite accurate mm-hmm. in some ways. Mm-hmm. But as I say, I would call them a caricature of, um, of, of, of what, what goes on. But it, it certainly will keep you occupied for yeah. some considerable time because there are a lot of them. Yeah. All right, great stuff. Um, question 13, uh, do you have any irrational fears? Um, I have fears, whether they're irrational or not, one would only, I suppose if one could look back mm. from a future time to tell yeah. you. So I, I don't know whether I've got irrational fears. The only one, I love my garden, and that's been my sanctuary over this lockdown period. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am absolutely petrified of wasps. Okay. So is that irrational? I don't know. Well, uh, as, as you say, it's it's not irrational to you, but uh, to some it might be. You know, you, you, you see me moving very fast. <laughs> if I'm <anywhere> near me. <laughs> and that's the thing you can do, apparently. I'm not, I'm not fearful of bees. It's just wasps. Oh, really? So um, bumblebees and things, you, you're not too bothered about them? No, because I've got lots of them in the garden. Because they will—they are not um, 
aggressive mm. in that sense. They will, they will not, they will leave you alone. Mm-hmm. You leave them alone, they will leave you alone. Yeah. Um, but, but wasps are, can be very aggressive. <laughs> okay, different, different species altogether, all right. Um, question 14, how old are your oldest pair of shoes? Um, they're all old because <laughs> I hate buying shoes. Oh. So I don't know when the last time I bought a pair of shoes. I've now got an excuse for not buying shoes. Uh-huh. <laughs> because I can't go into a shoe shop, which is, you know, that, that's one benefit of lockdown. So they're all pretty old. Okay. Do you like shopping in general? Or is it just shoes that you can't be bothered shopping for? Uh, um, yeah, yes and no, but it's not, you know, a lot of my um, friends female friends love going shopping mm. love buying new clothes and this sort of thing I don't no. um, when I go to Italy one of my one of my close friends in Italy she's more like a sister always wants to take me to go and buy new clothes um, I was horrified if I you know go with the same clothes you mm-hmm. know what the Italians are like yeah. um, but um, I mean she would need to take me screaming Really? Um, practically, yes. And yet, if I may say, you're always so nicely dressed and turned out. So, you know, you must like that to some extent. I do, but I don't like going to buy going clothes. To them. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's, we'll the, that's, the, that's the thing. I just, that's not been one of my favourites. But yeah, I like, I like scarves and things like that. Yeah. And I like to look smart, mm-hmm. providing I don't have to go out and buy the clothes to look smart. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. Um, question fifteen is who had who's had the biggest influence on your career in the law? Well, I, I suppose I've touched on this mm. already a little bit. I mean, I, I've been fortunate in having more than one person who's had an influence in in my life and also in my career. But I think the starting point was my um, grandfather um, mm. uh, and. You, you know, also my mum, she was, my, both my parents, but my mother was a great influence um, in just the, the way I live my life and also in supporting uh, me and trying to um, go into the law. The greatest sadness for me was she never actually saw me being installed as a as a senator. Mm. Um, but um, and my devil master was was a great influence. Uh, who's Alistair McGregor, who who left the bar, mm. um, has left a very successful career at the bar mm. to um, to become a minister of the Church of Scotland. So mm. he gave he gave up that career um, and a good career to become a minister. And as you've probably seen from the notices he died earlier this year mm. so uh, well in fact it, um, it, he died just at the time of my uh, retire no he died on the 13th of June and then um, I, I, I was asked to do the readings at his funeral but that he he was a great supporter even after he left the bar really uh, and yeah. influenced in 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 the legal career. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, question number sixteen. Uh, maybe I, sh- I was going to say straightforward, but it doesn't always prove to be so with some of the guests. Favorite chocolate bar? <laughs> well, again, I don't know about you, but it's the kind of thing I do not have in the house because <laughs> you, you know um, I I don't buy chocolate, etc. But I suppose. Um, I quite like a Mars bar, okay. not fried. Not fried. <laughs> I know I come from Glasgow, but not fried. I've never had one before. <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> All right, Mars bars. Okay. Um, question seventeen: What is the fanciest fanciest event you've ever been to? Yeah, I was trying to think about this, and I suppose. I, I, on one occasion, I was invited to accompany somebody to the ceremony of the keys mm-hmm. at Holyrood Palace, and mm-hmm. that was that was really quite quite exciting. So I suppose that's the fanciest. But the Queen wasn't there. I think it was the I can't remember who was the one who represented the Queen in it. But you know, going to that ceremony it was a long time ago, and don't ask me what it was all about. But 
it was quite <laughs> funny because one of the, the one of the, the masers who knew me, um, I think I was still at the bar actually, who um, took me in, um, uh, and the person I was with took me in to let me see the huge mace, wow. uh, which was the back room. We the, the so it was it was quite quite exciting to be able yeah. to go to Holyrood. Um, uh, and see and, and be present at the, at the ceremony of the keys. So, fantastic! Yeah. All right. Uh, question eighteen is: What quirks do you have? Now that might be for you to answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, you know, I, I love entertaining, but nobody is allowed to fill my dishwasher. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. And amongst my friends, it's become a bit of a joke. So, you know, for, you know when I, when the last time I had a party, um, it was actually for a friend's 80th birthday, and they were really trying to wind me up. So the friends were all sneaking through to the kitchen, trying to load the dishwasher and full knowledge that I'd come through and say, don't do that, don't touch that. So I suppose that's... Um, you, you just know, like it. Um, do you have a place absolutely. for everything in it? That oh. absolutely, absolutely. So mm -hmm. I like to load my own dishwasher, and I don't let anyone drive my car. <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> okay. Um, question nineteen: What is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? I suppose the best piece of advice I've ever been given is to be yourself and not try to be something you're not. Mm -hmm. um, I can't, yeah, I think that's it. Just be yourself. Yeah, yeah. Nobody can ask anything more of you um, or, you know, expect anything else from you. You are who you are. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, I think, and again, you might, I'm not asking you to comment. <coughs> the trouble is that people can tell what I'm thinking from the look of my face. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> I'm not asking you to comment on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Question moving on swiftly. Question 20. What job would you be terrible at? Painting the house. Right. Um, I, I, I don't like, uh, I mean, I have tried to paint rooms, etc. And I'm not bad at it, but I hate it. And is that so specifically painting or DIY or anything that's kind of handy like that or just painting? No, I, I'm, I'm reasonably handy because you know, I've obviously um, I've had to do lots of different things, but I'm not particularly good at it necessarily. Um, uh, but, you know, I, if I start, I, I'm actually better painting doing something outside, mm -hmm. but that's because I love to be outside. But mm -hmm. actually being stuck in a room and painting the room, no, I'll just get somebody in to do it. Although now, at the moment, my plan was to have the house finally decorated inside, but of course, that's had to, um, that will have to be put on the back burner at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But no, I'm, no. And I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so it takes me a lot longer than it would anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, question 21 is, what is the weirdest talent you have? I'm told I raise an eyebrow, okay. but I don't know if that's a... All right. Maybe I don't have any talents. <laughs> Are you musical um, at all, or were you...? Well, I started learning the piano about, well, about 15 years ago, but I haven't really kept it up, because you really need to mm. um, be able to concentrate on, on it. So I'm going to get back to that. So, okay. uh, yeah, and I enjoyed it, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> but I enjoy playing. I enjoy music, particularly classical music. So yeah. Yeah, I need to get back to it when I can just, you know, everything's upside down at the moment. I don't know about you, but I find it difficult even to concentrate on reading a book just now. Yeah. When lots of people have read all sorts of books, yeah. I would have to actually sit down, stay still and concentrate. Yeah. And so I think that's just probably... It probably comes from, you know, having done such a high powered job and such a busy job that, um, you know, to to sit and read a book is probably feels a bit indulgent at the minute or, you know, and. Um, but I think it requires a concentration and um, um, I, I think just with everything that's been going on over the past yeah. 
few months and coming to terms with um, the end of a 48-year career in the law mm-hmm. is, um, I find, quite difficult. So yeah. maybe that's, that things will, will calm down. Absolutely, absolutely. We have come to the last question, Lady Ray, um, which is, what have you enjoyed most about lockdown? Not a lot, um, because one of my great passions and is entertaining friends mm-hmm. and making cooking Italian meals, okay. um, and that I love. Um, so I have not been able to do any of that mm. uh, since, well, obviously since um, lockdown. Lockdown, um, but I think the thing I've enjoyed most in the sense is having more time to be out in the garden and the weather has been conducive to that yeah. because I love the garden mm-hmm. and I love um, and I'm not talking about pottering I, I you know love all the you know, cutting the grass and okay. cutting branches and all sorts of things no I love doing that uh-huh. you no know, because you can actually think you know when you're digging a hole you, you can get your aggression out <laughs> <laughs> oh dear so you've enjoyed that and um, yeah you imagine your garden's looking spectacular is it well I wouldn't say well it's looking quite good yes, yes. it's looking not you'll have to come and visit sometime and see oh it. I'd like that yeah absolutely and if only the sun would come back as well and we could <laughs> yeah yeah I mean that's more yeah, the problem is about the the weather. Is we don't get the weather. Sometimes it's not. And and being stuck in for me is just, you yeah. know, especially during this period, yeah. it's um, been quite hard when when you haven't been able to get to get out because mm-hmm. um, tackling cleaning the windows and things like that is just. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, you know, it's not exactly my cup of tea. Not that I don't. Not that I don't think I'm a. I should be doing it or I'm above that sort of thing. No, 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 that's no, I'm, that's no, I mean, I just don't like it. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, I get that. I totally get that. <laughs> well, Lady Ray, you've been such an interesting guest. Thank you so much for answering the questions and answering them so fully and honestly and with such incredible answers. We're really grateful to you for doing that. Um, and before I let you go, I wonder if you would uh, nominate someone Oh, right. Um, what about Lady Scott? I'm sure she would be very interesting because I mean, she's had a very interesting career, um, um, probably much more interesting than me. And now she's also on the bench. So she's had a very, very interesting career. So I'm sure she would have a lot of interesting answers to give you. Thank you very much for that. We will. Mm. I hope that she will take up that challenge. But... Can okay. I thank you again um, so much um, for taking part in the quiz? It's, I'm sure many people will enjoy listening to this, and uh, well, I, <laughs> I think they will, uh, and learn a lot about you and a lot of quite a number of tips there as well for a practice in law. Um, but again, thank you so much, um, okay. and I, I hope to see you soon. Okay. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Hey Legal Quiz. Hey Legal We are releasing more episodes weekly, so please sign up for free to Hey Legal on our website to access our free content, legal updates and more. Plus follow us on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram and on all podcasting platforms.